What's up and good afternoon guys. Welcome back to another video. Clearly we are not in any of my trucks today. We are in a vehicle that hasn't been on the channel for quite some time here. And in case you couldn't tell, that is the SEMA Tahoe, which is currently at a whopping 1800 miles on this thing. And the change engine oil light came on. So I'm wondering, is that like a time thing versus a mile thing on these things when it's automatic like that? I always figured it was a mileage thing, but could be time related and well clearly since we built this thing for SEMA my mom has not been driving it that much as there's only 1800 miles on it but it is back to the grandma mobile we've got the kids car seat back there no not my kid Gunner does not like sitting in a car seat so not only has it been a minute that the Tahoe has been on the channel but it has been quite some time since this thing has unfortunately had a bath clearly you can see i mean it just looks filthy the wrap is filthy uh one of the important things about having a wrap is you maintain it and clearly uh we need to step that game up just a little bit now the good thing is this is mostly rainwater and dust that's creating all of the dirt that you see on the wrap there versus actual hard water if you use hard water you're essentially going to destroy your wrap really quick i did that on my 2015 uh, silverado i had the roof wrapped in black and i had used hard water to wash it well i did it outside in the sun by the time i got up there to dry it uh, i had already left like calcified marks of all the minerals that you see in hard water and eventually they ended up like etching their way into the actual vinyl on the roof if you guys haven't seen the pressure washer setup that i have which if you guys are avid followers of the channel you have and <sighs> i have bad luck with sunglasses but we'll talk about the pressure washer setup in the back over there in a second first let's go a little more in depth on the deionized water setup that I have, which are these two tanks right here. Now, technically you only need one deionized water tank. Salesman kind of sold me on two, and at this point I'd rather have two as like a backup. So I had one go out um, the other day, and basically what they anticipated is you can get about a thousand gallons of water per tank through. So what deionized water is, you're essentially pulling all like the minerals out of the water, which the minerals are what dry and leave the little water spots on everything. So by pulling all minerals out, the water can just dry with no water spots, which means you no longer ever have to dry your vehicle again, which to me is like the greatest thing because not only are you risking scratching it more when you're drying it, but it is just a huge, huge time saver to not have to dry. And again, if you're a regular viewer of the channel, you already know a lot about these, but for everybody that is new, um, these are from Pure Tech. I forget what the exact cost is. It ended up being like three or 400 bucks or just under that for the initial setup to bring out the tanks, bring out the monitors. You have to buy two of these monitors if you're running two tanks. So these were like 60 bucks a piece for the actual tank monitoring system and all that. And then it is, uh, I believe, 65 or 80 something dollars a tank to switch them, and it's $15 per tank a month. So essentially, 30 bucks a month. These have lasted me about eight months. I just swapped them. I've had them for about eight months, and we've done a ton of vehicle washing here. So you could probably get away with one tank for. I don't, I don't want to say a year, but probably a year if you wash a vehicle like at the rate most people do. So again, we've got the DI nice tanks back there, and then we've got. This PVC pipe that is painted black that runs along with the code base right there all the way up to the pressure washer setup over here. I'm running the AR Blue 630. This is an electric pressure washer. The reason I went electric is I want to be a good neighbor to all my neighbors over here. Plus the problem with the gas pressure washer is when you're not spraying and you set the nozzle down to go wipe or whatever, you still got this loud clunky thing sitting there running the whole freaking time. And you got maintenance on a gas pressure washer. You gotta go get fuel, all that. So this one's super easy. It is 1900 PSI, 2.1 gallons per minute. Now again, when you're washing a vehicle, you don't need insanely high PSI. And as we all know, by the time the pressure actually gets to the pressure washing wand and the tip and out, like it's not at 1900 PSI anymore. That's just like, that is ideal optimum conditions, probably directly out of the pump. The 2.1 gallons per minute, that's what you're more looking for when you're washing a vehicle. You want a higher gallons per minute because that means more water is flowing. And now here's where like my life has been changed. I mean, it's already been changed a lot with the whole pressure washer setup that I have and just making things insanely easy. And I know I've mentioned it before, the easier something is, the more likely you are to do it. Now, typically most people would go for the old pressure washing wand that typically comes with your pressure washer, which ends up being this, uh, I don't know what they call it, but about a three foot, maybe a little bit longer wand here. And this is actually the one that came off of my uh, Husqvarna pressure washer that we use for work. But the reason I use it over the one that came with the AR Blue is it's got the little quick release tips, whereas the AR Blue has like the little adjustable tip here. Somehow, there you go. You can see the, the tip opening and closing there. And yes, I'm sure you could just pull this off and add a quick release to it. And if you've ever used one of these four foot pressure washing wands, they're a little awkward in size. Not bad if you're just using it to spray water, like most typical applications, 
but here's where they get a little funky. Once you add a foam cannon to the end of it, you're now dangling, I don't know what the weight of that thing is when it's actually filled with water, but even just having it on there with the brass fitting, it's a pretty heavy unit to sit there and try to dangle. So now you're a two hand job of trying to foam cannon your entire vehicle. Plus it's awkward if you're trying to like squeeze in between the building and your vehicle or your garage or whatever it may be like we have to do on the outside here, even though we have all that open space, but with the amount of hose that I have, sometimes you're kind of, you're trying to spray the wheels, but as you can see with the wall right there in the door, you're really close to those wheels. I mean, a lot of it's gonna spray back. So I've always, always, always wanted to get a stubby, just little pressure washing handle with no big extension wand on it. And I've literally had it in my Amazon cart like 10 times and just never pulled the trigger because they are expensive. I'm sure there's plenty of cheaper versions out there, but I figured, you know what, everybody's using the MTM uh, Hydro, which from the reviews, this is like the Mac Daddy of pressure washing handles. So finally, when we were up at Adams Polishes, I pulled the trigger and ended up buying one once I finally got my hand on it and could feel that like this thing actually does feel quality. It is made in Italy, not China, like everything else. And let me tell you guys, absolute game changer. I'm gonna get everything set up right now and we're gonna wash the Tahoe and I'll show you. Then we're gonna actually rinse down the BBB there because it's a little bit dirty from the last truck show that we had. So let me get everything set up. Water's turned on. Let me fire up my pressure washer. All right, she's fired up. Now again, this thing comes in handy for multiple reasons. I will say one weird thing about such a short handle is when you don't have the foam cannon on and you're just running with your pressure nozzle, whatever it may be, it actually has a tendency to want to kick back on you. So you can kind of see, like it wants to fly back this way. So you kind of got to adjust the way you hold it. I like to throw a couple fingers down below and just hold it that way so that way you can kind of lean into it a little bit more. Now I know this sounds like super trivial to you guys, but I can assure you, like after a full day of washing like 10 vehicles, it's gonna wear on you a little bit. Now here's where you're gonna see the pure joy of running the short handle. So I'm gonna start off first by using Chemical Guys's uh, Honeydew Snow Foam, I believe is what it's called. And this will just be for the initial uh, foaming. Then I wanna use, I know I have Adam's around here, somewhere, there we go. We've got Adam's Mega Foam, which I have not tried yet, so we'll try that in today's video as well. But I gotta say, the Chemical Guy stuff smells amazing, and I'm a big fan of the way it foams. It's like a real, to me, it's the frothiest foam that I've ever seen in person. Again, we're about to try the Adam's, and it sticks really well, which is good, because you feel like it's grabbing more of the dirt, but sometimes it's harder to uh, rinse off than others, and you'll see little streaking in the window where you didn't get all of the soap off. So even though you're running deionized water, if you don't get all the soap off, you're gonna see little like water spots or like soap scum marks. Now, when you combine these two, is when you'll see you literally have the perfect weighted foam cannon. I mean, literally, you can see there, we'll just do a little weight comparison. I mean, it is beautifully weighted, super easy to use, and it makes it more fun. He's coming to wash his truck. <laughs> I didn't know his window was down. Hey, it looks good, buddy. I mean, might as well wash the rest. Should we do the interior? Yeah, why not? All right, we'll foam cannon the interior. So I've gone ahead and rinsed it. Now, don't let anybody fool you into thinking a foam cannon is any type of like, never have to touch a vehicle, easy wash system. It's really not. All a foam cannon does is apply the soap to your vehicle versus the old ways where we used to do it in a bucket, which basically fills your bucket with dirt and you're constantly re-grabbing that dirt and rubbing it on the vehicle. Unless you use those little like grates that go over the bottom of your bucket, whatever. It's just not a, a technique I like to use. So really all a foam cannon does for me is it applies the soap to the vehicle. You can see without rubbing or actually wiping the vehicle down, it is still very, very dirty. I mean, I know that really doesn't do much other than remove some of the light dirt and contaminants. You're still gonna have to get on there and wipe your vehicle. Now, that being said, I have plenty of times that my truck is just barely lightly dusty, 
bring it over here, give it a quick rinse, quick foam cannon, quick rinse again without ever touching it, throw it back in the shop and I'm good to go. But if you actually have significant amount of dirt on your vehicle, um, you're still gonna have to wipe it down, which we're gonna have to do right now with the Tahoe. But first we're gonna pre-wet our microfibers a little bit here. Now we're gonna try some of the Adams uh, foam. One to two ounces of Adams Mega Foam Shampoo into canister, and then fill it four fifths full of water. That's a lot. Doesn't seem like that much. I put way more of that in the chemical, guys. Wait, huh? huh? What's an ounce? A shot glass? I don't drink. Shot glass an ounce? Maybe? Uh. Dude, Chris, you're gonna love this, bro. Oh, take, take a hit of that. Bubble gum? All right, let's see how the Adams does. I've got to say, consistency-wise, very similar to Chemical Guys. It might actually stick more. It seems like it's kind of sheeting off a little less than the Chemical Guys does. Now again, I'm not a fan of the old bucket and water. So I'll basically use one microfiber on like one little quadrant of the vehicle, throw it away, grab another one. That way we're never using too dirty of a rag. And then always, always wiping straight lines. But again, I'm not a detailer. Tahoe is essentially done. I'm gonna go pull it up to the front of the building, let it dry, and then I'll come back with some detail spray, especially on that black wrap. It is just, I don't wanna put too much pressure and rub it too many times, because like wraps aren't as easy to fix scratches and all that as it is like with paint and something that has a clear coat. Now, the other good thing about deionized water though is typically most people wash their vehicles in their driveway, which is like right next to all the other vehicles you own. So you just washed the vehicle and dried it, now you're washing one next to it, the overspray going onto that vehicle is inherently gonna leave water spots unless you're using deionized water. And in typical my fashion, I have forgotten the keys to the BBB today, so unfortunately, she's not gonna be getting rinsed off. Chris is just gonna give his truck a quick rinse, because again, the last structure that we were at, we were kind of by the beach, so it was a little bit of salty air and sandy air when everybody would drive by with the dust, so we wanna get the salt off the vehicle and not let it sit. Chris, how do you like a little short handle? It's nice, man. It's easy. It's light. Big change? Big change. So one thing I did notice with the Adams uh, foam versus the chemical guys, it seems like the Adams lasts a little bit longer. Typically, I'll go through one full container, or at least pretty close to a container, on uh, the Denali behind me. Now, that could be because I'm going like a little more in-depth on cleaning the Denali versus the uh, Tahoe, but this thing did the Tahoe and Chris's truck fully foamed. So again, of course, there's always going to be a time and a place for a certain wand. If you're pressure washing your deck or your concrete, you're probably gonna want the four foot wand or three foot, whatever it is. But I'm telling you guys, if you have not purchased one of these for your vehicle yet, it doesn't have to be the super expensive MTM uh, Hydro one. Cause again, I think this thing retails for like 120 bucks. I'll put a link down on Amazon if you guys do want to get it. I like it. I'm assuming you could always just remove the uh, little extra wand portion here, put a quick release on the end of this wand and it would still end up being like a 16 inch wand. So we got the Tahoe all finished up, nice and clean. We used a Chemical Guys wrap detailer on the wrap and turned out really nice. My first time using it, Chris's truck's all done. And then we got all of the man, the myth, the legend himself. Look at this teamwork, dude. Chris, swirl, no swirls, dude. What are you doing, man? I'm an advocate right here for this Renegade Rebel Spray. Let me tell you. That thing just... Is that good stuff, bro? Look at it. Woo! Man, that's good stuff. That's good stuff. Get your truck packed. Wes had to swing by and bring some more of his, his offer-up deals that he found. The offer-up deal of today was... He got us another three-ton, low-profile, long-reach jack. Looks like it's in pretty much brand new condition. As well as, uh, well, we did just clean the warehouse last night and then Wes shows up with a truckload more of tools and clamps and I don't even know, jumper cable parts, Milwaukee tools, batteries. Hey guys, Chris has been on me long enough. I think it's time we finally put his new work for it decal on his back window. We, what are you working on Wes' truck? We gotta do your decal. Well, you can't do nothing by yourself, Rhino? No. I'm trying to teach Chris how to do this, so I don't have to do it but anymore. I don't wanna learn, man. That's the you, thing. you don't wanna learn? We'd rather just pay for shit. We don't work for it around here. <laughs> Here you go. Here, here's some tape. 
Did I'm you show them my 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 new my new jack? Yeah, show them your new jack, dude. Those are twins back there, huh? Woo, boy. Woo. So for everybody that wonders if you could do these on split window trucks, absolutely. Go that four and three quarters fit. All right, so now the trick with the split window. You're just gonna tape right along the edge of where the split is. You're just gonna take a razor blade. All you're gonna do is trim, trim, and you're just gonna lay this piece directly back in. Make sure it's all in line. Save this booger in place. Same thing on the other side. Now we're gonna create a hinge on each side. And then we're gonna peel over, peel the back of paper back off, cut it, apply it, basically. One of us has to work. The axle is this long bolt here. It only it took like 10 minutes. Oh, hey. Hey. You're gonna order some three. Should I order three sets or what? Yeah. Gas man. And there she blows. Look at that, Chris. Here how you feeling, buddy? On how long? Feeling great, man. Thanks. How long no problem, have? buddy. No problem. Appreciate New decal looking good. Of course, if you guys want an outline decal like that, we've got those in many more at wow. wordportpale.com. There'll be a link somewhere on the screen. Left hand turns only. Yeah, Wes has got a little problem here. I think he's worn his little thin cheese can. I'm going to take a finger off. Don't put your hands where you put, wouldn't put your wiener. <laughs> So with that, guys, we're going to wrap up this video. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now that we do not miss out on any future content. Don't forget to give this video a like and get a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out WorkForTheBarrel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you got to be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. Roll the outro. Damn. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. Uh. Yeah.